What the fuck? Fucking fuck. I mean, this movie, it was... Better than Hall- than Friday the 13th Part 2. Yeah, I was about to say, it was not better than Halloween 1. It was better than Friday the 13th Part 2. <sighs> no. Welcome back. Hi. We watched Halloween 2. Don't, don't hurt Michael. He's done nothing wrong here. Uh, well, he, he murdered like 14 people. Exactly 14 people. <laughs> uh, I like that they mentioned the body count at the end of the movie. That was kind of funny. It was slightly off. <laughs> um, gosh, where do we even begin? I guess we should start with uh, John Carpenter, who wrote and directed the first movie, mm-hmm. wrote this movie only because he was under contract to, did not want to write this movie, refused to direct this movie. Really? I think the only reason it's as watchable as it is is because John Carpenter wrote it. Because mm-hmm. it's... Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it's got, like, consistent pace. It's slow. It's but not so too, slow. Oh my It's not too God. slow. There's plenty, of, there's plenty of deaths. Um, there's not really a plot. Yeah. But it... It, it kind of does, but it kind of doesn't. It just feels like the f- you left the first movie on too long. Yeah. Because it picks up right where the first movie left off. And I think the first movie ended where it was supposed to. Mm-hmm. Like... I mean, it wasn't open really for, like, a sequel. It was open to have a cliffhanger, and I think that that was good, but it wasn't really supposed to have a sequel, even though it was left open for that. Yeah, especially not a sequel that picks up immediately where the last movie ended. You like, c- that was the end of that story. Mm-hmm. You could probably bring Michael back and have him killing other people, mm-hmm. but... There's no explanation for why Michael is the way he is. Yeah, no. He's just kind of a badass for no reason. It doesn't make sense in this world that Michael would have all these superpowers. Like, like he could take six bullets and, you know, catch on fire and be okay. Yeah, it makes sense for, like, Jason, because he's undead. And Freddy is undead. It doesn't make sense for Michael. Michael's just a dude. Crazy, insane dude. Who's pure evil. (laughs) I, I guess the pure evil inside him lets him take a bullet, except when it's to his eyes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was that was some bullshit, too. This lady who had never fired a gun before in her life fires two shots, and has both of them in his eyes. Yeah, because it's like, oh, she got a good headshot in. But there's no bullet holes on the mask anywhere, so she has to have hit him in the eyes. Well, I mean, he's blind afterwards, too. Well, yeah, he's blind, he's bleeding from the ice holes. It's a fucking... It's a movie. Like, most of the movie was just characters doing something. It didn't really have any important element to it. It didn't really feel like, oh, well, they're doing this because of this and this and this. No, it just felt like, oh, well, we gotta fill up the runtime somehow. I mean, there was one... There was only really one scene that I remember from the movie being actually important, and this is where we get told that, uh, what's her face? Lori. Lori is the sister of Michael, which is the stupidest twist I have heard ever. Yeah, like, it's it got sealed away after Michael's parents died, like, yeah. Why? Why was it sealed away when his parents died? Why are they just now opening it? It just feels it, so cheap. And it never... It's not important at all. You could cut it from the movie. Well, I mean, it kind of explains why he's obsessed with killing her. And it does give a little bit more weight to the scene. Yeah. But, I mean, it doesn't really matter. The no. same, You know, everything in the plot would have happened exactly the same. And there... Also, it's not a good twist because we weren't given any hints as to why this was. I feel like deep down I knew that was coming. 
that it was like, oh, she's Michael Myers' sister. I, I didn't expect them to jump that shark this early in the franchise. I thought you were joking when you said... You, you made, like, a passing well, he, joke about I made, it. I made a passing joke about it, thinking, like, oh, God, that's something they'll probably have in, like, Halloween 6 or 7. Oh, Lori's a sister. Now that we're seven movies in. Yeah. No, uh, two. It took two movies to get to that. <laughs> You've jumped the shark already. The all of the all of the effects in this movie were crappier than the last movie. In the last movie, the cinematography was really good. It was really there, solid. There were some good shots on this. There it were there, but you know there. It was. You could tell that um, John Carpenter wasn't actively involved in the project no, as much as he was in the first one. This is one of, like, two movies that he's ever written and not directed. Really? And I can't remember what the other one was. Please don't let it be Halloween 3. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the music was was really bad, too. They had the theme from the first movie. But they're clearly playing it on a different instrument. Mm-hmm. And it just sounds so much worse. Like, it sounds like it was on a cheaper keyboard. Like, they went out, bought, like, the $5 keyboard at Dollar Tree. Yeah. And replayed the theme. It's like, just use this theme. Look, it's the it's same the thing. I, I wouldn't have had a problem if they just used the same... Well, I would have had a problem, but, you know, at least it was as good as it was in the first movie. Yeah. It's just, it, but it's not. It's not. It's shittier. It just feels cheaper, and I and you know, music is still used very sparingly through the movie, so it's not a huge problem. But when the music does show up, you notice it, and it's very distracting. It takes you right out of the moment. What little atmosphere this movie has is just evaporated whenever the music comes on. Um. But like, okay, we're noticing with the names because. The boyfriend from Halloween was Paul. Oh, yeah. And then Paul was the camp counselor in Friday the 13th Part 2. The first girl to die in this movie is named Alice, which was the main character of Friday the 13th. and the first it's a shared one, universe. The first one to die in Friday the 13th Part 1. And then uh, Annie. There was an Annie in both in Halloween 1 and Friday the 13th 1. And I think both of them died. The only problem... With this theory that they're in the same universe, is that they all die at some point in their respective universe? I so I choose to believe boyfriend Paul is also camp counselor Paul. I choose to believe that I can be whatever I want to. Thank you. You will be neither a boyfriend nor a camp counselor. Oh. <laughs> um. I'm gonna I'm gonna be sad about that for the rest of the review. <laughs> you won't. Fuck, you know me too well. <laughs> oh, so like, Lori shows up at the hospital. Mm -hmm. And everyone's like, oh hey, is this Lori Strode? And it's like, how do they know her? <laughs> In the first movie, she was like the unpopular girl. And everyone at the hospital knows her. And I, I know this is like a small town, but it seems big enough to where you wouldn't know everybody in it, right? Yeah. It just seems very convenient. It's like, oh, hey, she's the main character. We should probably know her at this point. It doesn't... It's just so clumsy. I mean, the, the twist is clumsy. The, the effects are clumsy. There's a scene where, like, Michael walks through a thing of glass. It's not like he's running at it. He just walks through it. There's another scene where a guy just, funny. just slips on some blood. That, like, neon red blood. Yeah, yeah, it's it's clearly paint. And then he does, like, the comedic, like, whoops! Yeah, his <laughs> legs fly up in the air. And... It's just a clumsy, boring movie. In other words, there were some good laughs. Yeah, but they were all ironic. The movie didn't uh, intend them to be. Yeah, okay, fair. <laughs> I, it, wasn't, it wasn't a slog, mostly. And it feels like it could have been... 20 to 30 minutes shorter. Yeah. But it wasn't, like, a slog. Like, Friday the 13th Part 2 kind of was. Like, there there were a lot of dull moments in that movie where yeah. this one kind of wasn't as dull. At least Friday the 13th 
part two had some energy to it. You know, there was something, you, you know, I still, I still thought about the characters. I, I still thought that they had semi-distinct personalities. Granted, they were cardboard cutouts. But at least, you know, they... I guess the analogy I would use is that in, in Halloween Part 2, the characters are footprints. In Friday the 13th Part 2, the characters were boots. So, you know, these guys... I don't know anything about these characters. Granted, you know, this is probably established in the last movie, but I don't remember it that well. You know, two characters made it well. Okay, Michael. But, but Donald Michael Pleasance, has no character other than that he's pure evil. Donald Pleasance and Lori made it back. Does it... Why, why is Michael a good villain? I really like... Um, the idea that you know you can have a narrative villain and the big bad villain, and I think I think Michael is very much so a big bad villain. Yeah, but he's know. not a a well written one. I don't know. He worked. So he somehow worked better in the first movie hmm. than he did in this one. I think just I don't know. In the first movie, you didn't see a lot of him, so he was kind of this vague, ambiguous character. So it seemed okay that his motivations were vague and ambiguous. Yeah. Whereas in this movie, he's there. You're constantly watching him kill people, and it's like... But why, though? Yeah. But why? Like, in this movie, I, I think you're right. We see him a hell of a lot. And he just keeps coming, and, you know, it's, it's kind of neat. He doesn't, he doesn't get bogged down by bullets or anything. But, you know, having that mystery about him in the last movie really kind of helped... So, you know, kind of helped the movie a lot. You, you know, you go back to even Friday the 13th Part 2, which we just watched recently, which is Yesterday. why we keep quoting it. That was the last movie that, the, that we watched. Um, you know, Jason in that movie, we didn't see him an awful lot. Like, we saw him a lot towards the end, but that was the climax of the movie and it made sense. Here, he's just there all the time. And you see him pretty much every 15 minutes on the dot. And, you know, you expect... A character that you want to spend that much time with is somebody who's fleshed out. They don't flesh him out. Yeah. They... That's another thing, because, like, in the first one... Okay, he takes some bullets and then disappears. But it never seems... Unrealistic. Yeah. Because he kind of... He seems more ghostly in the first one, I guess. But then in this one, he takes so much damage... And just nothing. Except for being shot twice in the eyes. Yeah, okay. That blinds him. Um, Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Do you have anything else? Halloween Part 2. Don't see. Not, not as good as the first. Watchable. But if that's not really high wanna, if I mean, there's so many other... Don't watch any of these movies except for the first three. Well, we've only seen two. They're, they no, I mean like better. Halloween, Friday the Thirteenth, and Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, we haven't seen all of them. It's too early to judge. Not. Anyways, next time on Halloween, it's gonna be the season of the witch. You got to pick up every stitch. Must be the season of the week.